Hey everyone, so in this video, I am going to be talking about the Protective Security Assessment Cyber Security Assessment. Our Cyber Security Assessment is different from our School Safety Assessment and our Protective Security or our Physical Security Assessment because this focuses on cyber crimes and cyber security. So although there are some crossovers between physical security and cyber security, we decided this needed to be a completely separate survey because there's just so many questions that are necessary to do a comprehensive cyber security a survey or assessment that we wanted to not get bogged down with the physical security um, side of things. So the purpose of this is to create a comprehensive cybersecurity assessment that is consistent, which means if we do a thousand assessments, let's say we do a thousand financial ser service firms, every assessment is going to be consistent. They're going to be make, they're going to identify the same vulnerabilities if they're necessary. They're going to make the same recommendations and they're going to be, it's going to be an assessment that you can count on. So this assessment tool uses a proven methodology that was developed by the federal government about over the last 10 years for both physical and cybersecurity. And the outcome of this is really to provide useful and predictable recommendations. So let me get started. I'm going to go into an assessment that I have here. So if you're an assessor or you're doing a self-assessment, you will have an assessment list. We'll click on the dashboard to get into the assessment. Now, the assessment is very comprehensive, and that has a lot of different sections that you go through in order to um, in, in order to uh, do a complete survey. Then based on your threat ma matrix and the survey questions that you've answered, we will come up with a list of the vulnerabilities that you have and then your countermeasure recommendations or your options for consideration. The things that you need to do to get your um, business up to best practices. So I'm on the general description and the general description is used for creating um, the report. So we'll put in a business description, we put in our reason for assessment, and now if you're part of something like a financial services firm where you're doing your assessment as part of compliance, there are going to be a lot of things that are already going to be set up for you. Now over here to the left we have our different um, our different sections. So general description, which I just talked about, is just a general description of the facility or the business you're doing a cyber assessment for. Physical access is related to making sure that people cannot get to your networking equipment, um, your computer, your sensitive computer equipment, your servers, that kind of thing. What kind of physical access controls do you have in place? Internet access talks about how your business connects to the internet. What type of service do you use? Do you have routers and switches? And did your router come from the vendor or did you bring in your own router? And then how are you, you know, what um, policies and procedures do you have in place um, for the physical, for, for your internet access? Your network access and layout is related to your, your routers and your switches and how people connect inside of your organization or if they work remote outside of their organization using a VPN, how do people connect to your network? Data storage and retention is related to how you store data. So if you're a financial services firm, you are not supposed to be keep, keeping PII data forever. So you're supposed to have destruction, you know, data destruction policies in place. So this section, we, we question you about how you store data and how you, what your retention policies are. And the next section is computer hardware and other devices. Are you using laptops, desktops? Who owns the laptops that your users use? Um, how, are they, how are they controlled? Do they have virus scans? A lot of questions on that. Software and technologies is related to um, what software do you use? Do you use cloud-based software? Do you use um, on-premise software? How do you secure it? How is password management done? That's all in the software and technology section. File and document section uh, sharing, that is, that is related to how does your organization share documents with the outside world? So if you're a financial services firm or you're a mortgage company and you need to share documents with, let's say, your um, other businesses you work with or your customers, um, what's your policies for that? How do you do it? How do you make sure that that is secure, it's encrypted, you don't have to worry about um, theft of data from dial uh, file and document sharing? Email access 
is just what it says. Email is one of the biggest areas where people break in and do things. So phishing attacks come through email. A lot of Trojans and malware come through email. So how do you manage your email? There's a whole section on that. Backup and recovery. How do you make sure that the data that is on your site is backed up? Can you recover it? Um, are you being compliant with all of the um, rules and regulations that you are supposed to be following? Cybersecurity management is related to um, all the plans and procedures you're supposed to have in place. So do you have a continuity of operations plan? Do you have a cybersecurity plan? Um, do you do training? Do you do cybersecurity awareness training? Do you have an incident response plan related to cyber? Um, are you keeping an inventory? Um, what is your change management process? Um, this is a very comprehensive um, section and it's really comprehensive because it needs to be comprehensive because those are a lot of the, the procedures, plans, and policies that need to be in place to, to really have a good cybersecurity profile. Okay, and then the last section down here is the threat matrix. Now, depending on the type of business you are, the threat matrix may already be filled out. Now, what the threat matrix is, is it's kind of what it says. It's a matrix. So on, on one side of the matrix, we have the different threats, like theft of user credentials for your internal users, theft of your customers' credentials, theft of business and financial data. Um, then we can go down to different things like your theft of PII, uh, Trojans and malware, um, modification of services. So we have all these different threats, and then we have the different levels, the different levels of risks that we expect to have the, those threats, but then the other part of this is consequence. So what is going to happen to your business if if let's say theft of user credentials for internal users happen is it going to disrupt your sales and marketing is it going to disrupt your manufacturing is it going to hurt your supply chain so this is where this entire uh, matrix comes now what the matrix is used for is it's part of the methodology that allows us to then determine what countermeasures or what options for considerations we should prevent present to you to get your uh, business up to the standard for the threat matrix. So what that does is it creates a thing called the necessary level of protection. Now a baseline level of protection is all things you should have in place just because you own a computer, you know. Good password management, keeping track of, you know, just the, just the very basics. That's called your baseline a le a level of protection. Your necessary level of protection is based on your threat matrix. What threats are you likely to see based on your business and what the consequence is going to be if one of those threats actually happens. So this is a quick overview of the cyber assessment process. In the uh, other videos I will go through in great detail what each of the questions are in each of the sections and why we ask them.